The new Strix Point AI 300 series processors are rolling out, starting with their top end AI9 SKUs. Much like their code name, they're equal parts intriguing and vaguely threatening. We've already taken a look at the gaming performance of the lesser model's iGPU, the 12 compute unit 880M. But today, we've got a head to head comparison between the Ryzen AI9 365 and AI9 HX370. The latter features the hefty 890M iGPU with 16 compute units on that sweet new RDNA 3.5 architecture. In one corner, we have the 10 core AI9 365 absolutely housing four Zen 5 and six Zen 5C cores at up to five gigahertz paired with that 880M. And in the other corner, it's the 12 core AI9 HX370 absolutely packing not only four Zen 5 cores of its own, but also two extra Zen 5C cores, eight in total at up to 5.1 gigahertz accompanied by the 890M. The laptops we've gotten for this comparison are aren't exactly like for like. They're designed for slightly different use cases, one of which for the two laptops here today is whether you want to spend 1400 US dollars or 1700. We've got the thin and light Zenbook S16 powering that Ryzen 9 AI365 while also just being 1.1 centimeters and having a DDP up to 28 watts. For the AI9 HX370, we'll be using the ProArt PX13, which is smaller overall, but it makes up for it by being really funny. It also has beef your cooling and power profiles to handle the absolutely definitely beefy RTX 4050 it's got on board. The lowest TDP available in my Asus is the 35 watt whisper mode that regardless of what you might think doesn't actually require you to whisper. Also, the default TDP is called standard mode at 55 watts. We think it's also worth noting that the 35 watt whisper mode does hold 45 watts for up to four minutes before it descends to 35 watts, whereas the 55 watt mode just seems to settle in after just a few seconds are to load. This is gonna be part of the reason the whisper mode and standard mode perform so similarly. The power profiles on the ZenBook also shortly boost five watts above where they settle, as this is common for any CPU. We just want to acknowledge any differences in power characteristics since we'll be comparing the two chips. The ProArt also has a memory advantage with its 32 gigabytes versus the ZenBook's 24 gigs. So far, it looks like there's not a high probability that we see many AI9 HX370 laptops that also don't have a dedicated GPU. Asus is the first to market with fresh models featuring the new Strix Point chips, and so far, they only sell one HX370 model that does not include a dedicated GPU, that being the gray ZenBook S16. Still, that model seems to be in the little supply Applies. It's currently out of stock in a lot of places, even though it costs just as much, if not more, than the ProArt laptop that comes with a discrete 4050. Other vendors may provide more options, but there's no guarantee that anyone charging you this much for laptops will be cool enough to make cheaper options later. It might be down to the 880M or future low-end iGPUs to bring RDNA 3.5 to a bang for buck model. As for handhelds, GPD's new Pocket 4 releasing in October is the first mini PC to feature an AI300 processor. It's actually actually got the very same HX370 we're looking at today, just with a lower TDP to better suit that tiny handheld PC form factor. And don't get too excited, I know it wouldn't be a fair fight to pit the 880M against the RTX 4050, even if it is in a laptop, so before you ask in the comments, yes, we did disable the 4050 in the ProArt, to instead take a look at the 890M iGPU, you can stop punching the air now. Both systems will have their GPU memory allocation set to 8 gigabytes to ensure those iGPUs have plenty of room to stretch their legs. The memory is also clocked at 7,500 mega transfers on both systems, so there's no funny business going on there. They're on equal RAM footing as they can be, considering the ProArt does have an 8 gig advantage. So then, the differences between the laptops aren't perfect for the most direct comparison, but we're likely still going to be GPU or memory bottlenecked in much the same way previous iGPUs have been. And of course, the most interesting data to look at is going to be the performance at or around the 30 watt mark. These laptops, just like a lot of handhelds, are in the 60 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So we'll be testing resolutions like 1280 by 1800, 1600 by 1000, and so forth instead of 1080p or 720p, since these are the resolutions that actually fill your whole screen at 16 by 10. I know the new numbers are scary, but it's okay. Dad's got you, don't worry. Kicking off the benchmarks with 3D Mark Time Spy, let's get some idea of how these RDNA 3.5 GPUs may stack up against the previous generation. The graphics score for the ROG Ally at 30 watts is about 10% behind the 
880M at 28 watts and 20% behind the 890M at its 35 watt TDP. To confirm this, we ran the Cyberpunk 2077 built-in benchmark on the RG Ally, Ally X, and both of these AI300 chips. The 880M was 15% faster than the standard Ally, while the 890M at 35 watts was a whopping 29% faster. We do think a large part of the reason the original RG Ally is so far behind is its limited memory, but it's not always about how much you got, though it's about how you use it. Except in this situation, the Ally suck with only 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which is the main upgrade between the OG Ally and the X. Increased total memory and memory speed is a game changer on its own when it comes to integrated graphics. For the rest of the benchmarks, we didn't test against the 780M, just a brawl between the new AI brothers. We did include a smorgasbord of wattages, so be sure to look at which wattage each bar represents. Staying with Cyberpunk 2077, we tested every wattage these little buggers offer to get an idea of power scaling and performance per watt. Nerd stuff. In 800p with the Steam Deck preset selected, we see that the 28 watt on the 880M is all you need to enjoy a very nice 60 FPS experience. There's only about a 10 to 15% difference between the 880M at 28 watts and the 890M at 55 watts, so we think it's clear which is more efficient and where the point of diminishing returns is. In GTA 5 at 800p, high settings, we include the AI9365 with its 880M at just 17 watts to show that, yeah, it crushes GTA 5 at even its lowest wattage. You might also be confused by the narrow gap between the 880M and 890M, and we were as well, so we cranked up the resolution to Wumbo mode at 1200p to find out that it's maybe 10% better on the 890M, even if you also crank up the TDP to 55 watts, bringing us back to those diminishing returns. Switching back to 800p, we've got Borderlands 3 with the low preset showing off some much larger gains for the 890M. Averages and 1% lows jump by between 13 to 38%, while 0.1% lows explode with a three times increase. Calm down. I said calm down. That means you, Cam. Not to rain on anyone's parade, but we think that's entirely due to the stupid high memory usage with this game. Since the AI9HX370 has 32 gigs of RAM, we saw this game stretching its legs with memory usage well over 20 gigabytes. Even without looking at that, the stuttering is a telltale sign that we've got some memory goofiness going on. We turned up the resolution and settings to 1000p medium to see that the performance difference is still mostly thanks to the much improved 0.1% lows. Helldivers 2 is a little harder to benchmark, but we did our best. So before you yell at me in the comments, please at least try to consider my feelings first. This game is sort of like GTA 5 in that there's a pretty small gap between these two devices, but does widen a bit when the 890M is at its 50 55 watt mode. In Baldur's Gate 3, we're seeing performance gains of 9 to 15% to the average FPS, depending on the wattage. It's an unremarkable result, which was also coincidentally my nickname in high school. And we're betting there's something else besides compute unit count and memory that's really holding this game back. Most of you would likely agree that this game's a little wonky on most hardware, which isn't to say it's unplayable by any means, it's just not a super smooth experience in general. No Man's Sky's latest update has it back on more screens than a Best Buy on Super Bowl weekend, Side note, that's the best time to buy a new TV, just saying. Regardless, we loaded up No Man's Sky to see how it plays. It's sort of hard to benchmark too, but we've again got the full spread of wattages to take a look at. It's probably in the same boat as Baldur's Gate in that there's not a whole lot you can do about the stutters, but it does show some minor improvements as we move from the 880M to 890M and increase the TDP. To round out this comparison, we're also gonna look at some non-GPU specific workloads. Cinebench 2024 shows a 31% improvement to the multi-threaded score between between the 10 core AI9365 at 28 watts and the 12 core AI9HX370 at 35 watts. In Geekbench 6, we see a similar story as single core performance is about the same among the chips and TDPs, while the multi core performance scales reasonably well between the two chips. What's most interesting to us is how gosh darn close the AI9365 is to the higher wattages when it's at just 17 watts. For some more use case specific benchmarking, we're looking to Puget Systems, who's developed a benchmark suite targeted towards creators. We ran the Adobe Premiere Pro test to see how these guys compare in video production. And as indicated in the synthetic test, we see a respectable 20 to 25% gain for the HX370 chip. To see how they compare in day-to-day -day web browsing, video conferencing, and light 3D loads, we ran PC Mark 10. Running both chips at their higher wattages, we're looking at a very minimal difference between the two. The digital content creation portion of the benchmark is where they differ the most at a 24% benefit to the HX370 chip with the other two portions being basically identical. If you're saying to yourself, hey, what about the darn AI performance? Don't worry. 
We know it's on everyone's mind. We gave these little goons a good old AI shakedown with the best, most meaningful benchmark around. Yep, that's right. We're looking at Geekbench ML to see that the HX370 grabs a five to 10% victory to do well whatever you're going to do with machine learning on these laptops. In all seriousness, AI is or allegedly will be a big part of our, important part of our lives. It's just that these companies are going so hard on AI marketing when most people aren't affected by local AI performance at all, at least for now. In researching what AI benchmarks are readily available, we did find that Opera, yeah, the web browser, released an AI benchmark tool to the public in June. They acknowledged the need and delivered a test that seeks to determine your device's readiness for AI. There's three main indicators measured, tokens per second, first token latency, and model load time. Based on the profile you choose, it will download the corresponding AI model and then run a series of tests through several repetitions to provide an average for each indicator. The profiles being AI ready, AI standard, and AI enthusiast, which indicates how demanding each test is, with the AI ready test being the easiest. So how do these little rascals compare? Well, both systems got a, your device is not AI ready in red text at the top of the results page the first time we ran the benchmark using the default AI standard profile. How? Does the AI benchmark not know AI is in the name of the processors? Huh? I thought that maybe the GPU memory allocation being set to eight gigabytes was clogging up my AI pipe, so I set it to auto to free up memory for the rest of the system. This decreased performance by a touch as it increased the model load time, which is probably a bad thing since it's measured in seconds. Looking at memory usage, it doesn't exceed about 10 gigabytes, so these AI chips just aren't up to it, I guess. Or so we thought, the AI ready preset is less intensive, so we'll finally see them flex their muscles, and what's that? It just says AI functional in yellow, like we've got some kind of toy? All right, we need this thing to validate us and tell us our pretty little laptop is ready for AI. So we're engaging the RTX 4050 on the HX370 laptop to quadruple our Pop-Tarts per token, or whatever that is. All right. All jokes aside, the AI9 HX370 chews through LLM tasks about 20% faster than its apprentice in tokens per second, and is about twice as fast in first token latency. I'm impressed at what AMD is able to squeeze out of about 30 watts, especially this 10 core, when it's sipping just 17 watts. Zen 5 and Zen 5C are shaping up to be the next potential catalyst in bringing high-end performance to laptops and mini PCs. We're at a point where most people are, will hardly benefit by going above a 20 or 30 watt TDP now that we've got such incredible efficiency. All day battery life is going to become the minimum with multi-day achievable for many laptops with these chips inside. Performance wise, laptop class chips are virtually imperceivable from desktop to PCs at daily tasks. And at this point, even some heavy productivity scenarios see low wattage SOCs punching above the high end desktop chips of just a few years ago. All in all, the CPU performance gained by going with an AI9 HX370 laptop over an AI9 365 is pretty nice, often about 20% faster on the 12 core. We think it's gonna be plenty to feed the biggest, baddest GPUs you'll find in a laptop. As for AI performance, we'll need to wait to see how that shapes up to give an honest perspective at how capable these chips are. Looking at the iGPUs, it doesn't seem that the extra compute units or cores provide very much in most games. Maybe they will when memory speeds make the next leap to provide more bandwidth, but as it is currently 12 compute units seems to be enough. We aren't chip analysts though, but the rumor Strix Halo chips are supposed to pack a whopping 40 compute units, so it looks like AMD sees reason to include larger iGPUs in their APUs. These chips will be power hungry, much like I'm chip hungry, with rumored configurations of up to 120 watt TDPs paired with faster memory. Innovation's hot right now, and we're excited to see where low power devices take us next.